What's going on everyone? Vince Delongeny here, super excited. We have our topsoil. We are gonna start spreading it and leveling it out and I'm gonna show you every step of the way. So stay tuned. All right, so here is our first load of topsoil. We have a second load coming that's gonna be going over there. Um, this load though, we're using to fill in primarily this area here. We're averaging at about four inches of depth along this old um, planter bed that used to be here with some trees. We actually uh, just ground the stumps here. If you want to learn more about that, I did do a video. I'll leave that linked in the description down below. Also, this is part of our 2022 lawn renovation. I did a video covering everything you need from the materials and tools and even go into a little bit of cost. Um, if you want to see that video, it's a great starting point before jumping into this one. I will leave that link in the description down below as well. Make sure you go over and check that out. And real quick, a couple quick videos that I just posted, steps one and two. Step one being killing the lawn. I'll leave that link in the description down below. Go check that out. Step two was scalping and dethatching. We just finished that actually last night. Go check that out. I'll leave that link in the description below too. This here is step three. I've always maintained that there's more than one way to do a lawn renovation. This is the way I've done it many times with success. Um, not asking or telling you to do it the same way. However, what I am telling you is that if you do follow the steps that I'm doing here, I can guarantee that you will get results. But this video is all about leveling and spreading all this soil out and getting everything nice and smooth in anticipation for seeding. So we've got this load right here. This is basically going to be used to fill this entire area, like I mentioned earlier, we'll have another load that comes in. And I might have some extra. If I have extra, I'll just put it in the backyard. It's not a big deal. I've got space in the backyard for it. But let me show you some of the areas that need attention and what we're going to be focusing on in this video. All right, one spot is along the edges of the concrete. The concrete sticks up about an inch or so in some areas. So we want to come in and fill those spots. We've got some areas where there used to be some trees here. These spots need to be filled in. Um, we've already talked about this area right here. Now this used to be a large planting bed that almost went all the way out to the sidewalk. So we're gonna fill that area. And then in the back here, we've got a, a couple spots that are just, you know, just need to be filled in. And then over here, we've got a lot of grading that needs to happen. We had all this uh, concrete poured recently and now that is at a higher elevation. You can see we're at about four inches or so, three and a half, four inches along the side here. So I've got to bring the soil basically up, kind of grade it down. We do have like a natural swale here that drains all the way to that inlet over there. So we want to maintain that. So I'll have to recreate that swale and kind of grade it so we basically have a channel here going under that fence. Let's go over some of the tools you're going to need to complete this job. So definitely a shovel. You're going to be shoveling some stuff around. Um, I like using a landscaping rake that's nice long landscaping rake that's going to do a great job of knocking down piles and you know starting to to level things out a bit might not be a bad idea to have a regular smaller rake on hand but these two tools right here are more of the specialty tools uh, that you might need to go out and get if you don't have them already the first one being the Lanzi lawn level tool this thing is going to be great for um, really leveling and smoothing things out filling in some of those lower spots knocking down the higher spots that's going to do a great job of that and then this one you can rent one of these actually from home depot i've done that in the past but this is a lawn roller this one in particular is made by the brindley hardy company you basically fill this up with water and then basically run it back and forth over the soil that you just placed to help compact it so that it's not like super fluffy it's not going to compact it to the point where you can't 
grow grass. Um, it's not it's not going to do that, but it does a great job of getting it to just the perfect uh, compactness for this job. Another piece of equipment that might be helpful for you is something like a wheelbarrow or a cart like this. I have this gorilla cart. It's a dump cart. It is awesome. I love using it. It holds, I believe, 7.5 cubic feet. This is the bigger one. So this is going to be great for loading it up with soil and taking it to places, dumping it, um, and moving your soil pile around. So a uh, good idea to have one of these or wheelbarrow, whatever you prefer, whatever you have. You don't necessarily have to go and get this cart, although I've been using it now for the entire season and it has been a huge help. We have topsoil here. More specifically, this is screened topsoil. So this has been passed through a machine that really breaks things down super fine. You really don't want clumpy soil or, or soil that has rocks or anything like that or sticks. Sure, a few have made it into this soil pile. You just pick them out. But if you don't get screened topsoil, it is going to be riddled with rocks and sticks and the stuff that you do not want for a renovation like this. One thing I want to talk about is how to measure or calculate how much fill or topsoil you're going to need. Most of the nurseries or places where you go to get this material is going to sell it by the yard. So what you need to do is calculate that volume based on some dimensions that you have for your property. So starting off with the area. So make sure you know the area of your property, how much area you're gonna be putting topsoil down on. That's going to give you your square footage. Now we need volume, right? So we need cubic feet. So what we're gonna do is uh, take an average thickness over your property. Let's say it's an inch or an inch and a half, right? You're gonna convert that into feet, then multiply that by your area. That's going to give you a cubic feet. That's going to be a volumetric measurement. That cubic footage needs to be converted to yards. So then what we're gonna do is divide by 27. You divide by 27 to get cubic yards, but you need to understand that what you're buying is loose material, right? That, that excavator or that front end loader that's collecting that material is using a bucket that is sized for most likely a yard, right? So it's gonna scoop up that one yard of material. That one yard of material is going to be loose. And when you're taking your measurements and you want that average one and a half inch or one inch thick of topsoil, that's more of a compacted thickness because we're gonna run a roller over all of this. So you wanna consider that in your calculation. And I factor around 10%, 10 to 15% for that bulking density uh, to get from a loose fill to a compacted fill. So you're gonna have to order a little bit more material because then once you come in and compact it, it will be at your desired thickness over that area. One of the things that I like to do is just do my research. Uh, I'm here at my local nursery that sells mulch, topsoil, compost, stone. I like to go around and just feel the material, make sure I'm not getting garbage basically, right? Um, what does the topsoil look like if I need fill dirt? What's in that fill dirt? What kind of debris is gonna be in it? What does the mulch look like? How is that ground? Um, encourage you to do the same if you're gonna be ordering materials or sourcing materials. Go out, do your research, make sure you get what you really want uh, so that you're not disappointed when it comes and is delivered to the site uh, and it's you know you want to make sure it's something that you can work with and if you really need to grab a sample send it off to a lab have it tested make sure the pH is good um, or you might be able to get information from the people at the front desk they may know what the pH of the soil is or they may have some lab results just ask them it doesn't hurt to ask so right behind me here is our park strip that's the area between the road and the sidewalk we just covered that up with soil i think it's a great opportunity as we are continuing to spread everything out here to show you at a smaller scale what we need to do and hopefully you can apply that to your entire yard so we've spread all the soil out here we spread it out with that landscaping rake 
it looks pretty good and level. We're just gonna run over it with the Lanzi Lawn Level tool, followed by the roller to kind of see where we're at after we roll it. And if we need to fix some areas or add some soil here and there, that's the time to do that before calling it good and moving on to a different area. So now you can see where you have any high or low spots. I mean, this honestly looks pretty good. Uh, I might add a little bit more topsoil here and there, but for the most part, this is this is what we're looking for. This is what we want. Um, this is very satisfactory, but really that's gonna be up to you. What is satisfactory to you? What will get your seal of approval when doing something like this? So, you know, just, you know, keep that in mind. This is really as far as you wanna take it, as far as you wanna go. Um, doesn't need to be perfect, but with some of these tools, it'll help you get pretty darn close. So what I've done here was prepared a time-lapse for you guys so you can see this entire process, uh, applying the same principles that I just shared with you in that grass strip between the road and the sidewalk. We're basically applying that same process everywhere else. I'm working in small batches, basically just spreading the dirt, raking it in, using the Lanzi tool to level it out and then rolling it in and then going back, maybe correcting a few spots here and there. So this time-lapse does, I think, a pretty good job of showing you that entire process. And while this time-lapse is going, I did wanna share with you another topic that might be of interest to you if you're going through a renovation like this, just something you might wanna consider and that is fallowing. Fallowing is the idea that you basically, when you bring in soil like this, or if you till up your existing ground, your existing soil, fallowing is the idea of basically letting this establish. There's weed seeds, there are, there are things present in the soil that will grow out of it. Um, and the idea behind fallowing is fertilizer, um, let whatever is here grow out, and then kill it as it comes up. Um, it's a means of preventing weeds in the future from coming up. It's definitely a well-known and well-practiced um, thing that folks will do, especially farmers. Um, but I don't have the time to do that. That does take quite some time to do. Some folks will do it for a couple years even before they decide to seed this with their desirable turf grass. So um, we are going to take the chemical means, the chemical approach to this by using a product called Tenacity. I mentioned that in my cool season lawn guide video a couple weeks back. Tenacity is great for this application. It'll give you a good six or so weeks of pre-emergent control, but it is safe on the seed, it will allow that new seed to grow and establish. And then once that new turf is established, we can then start to implement our normal pre-emergent program with things like prodiamine and dithiopyr, um, great pre-emergence that will help control the weeds. Um, not saying that it's foolproof or bulletproof. I mean, weeds will poke through and we may need to take post-emergent control into consideration and address those weeds um, but you know so there's risk involved and there's a lot of work and effort that goes into this but i have done this before uh, without any issues and you know don't anticipate there to be too many issues here either so just one thing i wanted to mention if you have the time and you want to practice fallowing and letting things grow out and killing them as you see it by all means, that's definitely something you could certainly consider and do, um, but we are not gonna be doing that here on this project for this renovation. All right, here it is. This is the final product. We are ready to seed. Super excited about that. This looks pretty smooth. I'm happy with it. Again, like I mentioned earlier, you could take this as far as you want it. You could keep rolling all day long. You could keep leveling and smoothing things out. Uh, this is gonna be good enough for me. This is ready for seeding. That is going to be the next step, so make sure you're following along. I hope that the tips I shared in this video help you 
with your lawn renovations. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and thank you for joining.